Hello everyone, Hero here and welcome to my latest content. Today we'll be going over the return of Melissa's birthright as a adapt version weapon and see if it's really worth investing in. Melissa's birthright has been in game for quite a while but it's never been outspoken as a must have weapon compared to the many other weapons in game. As of now it is within the nightfall rotation for the season of the plunder and if you can complete a grandmaster around it that you can get the adapt version of it which unlocks some unique mods with it. Let me make myself clear here that this is the first adapt grenade launcher in game and we do not know if Bungie has any plans in the future to release more or even make the weapon type meta through the very buffs and adjustments in the sandbox. This might not be enough for you to decide on getting it or not but it's definitely worth keeping in mind. So ignoring the stats of the weapon, as grenade launchers don't need a lot of investment to make them viable compared to other weapons, what does the weapon pack in terms of perks? It has a number of popular traits that are ideal for a grenade launcher in general. For example, blinding grenades and spike grenades are the two most popular perks that players will always use for both PvE or PvP. Spike will give you more damage on impact, which is great for PvE, but slightly risky to use in PvP. Blinding are great for both endgame PvE and PvP but require a firm grasp of detonating it at the precise timing for maximum success. Now in the next column we have a small palette to choose from but every last one of them have some great use overall. Ambitious Assassin, Lead from Gold and Slideways are great perks to have for neutral play of the game. They offer you items straight out of the pack and can enhance the fourth column easily without you needing to jump through hoops or builds to maximize them. Quick draw and steady hands are more suited for PvP and rightfully so, as they can make grenade launchers a quick mop up weapon or instigate in fights, something you may see rise off thanks to the sidearm buff. Now, I'll leave Grave Robber as it is because it's a bit risky to use with grenade launcher at times. Plus, things like slideways can easily cover what Grave Robber does without you needing to be close to targets to trigger it. In the final column, we have once again more great perks to play with. Auto Loan Holster, Frenzy, Moddy Kill Clip, One For All and Swashbuckler are great for any scenario you're in. Although grenade launchers don't really need damage perks as their indirect damage are already high enough, I can see both Frenzy and One For All being useful when paired correctly. One For All specifically being useful when paired with blinded grenades as all you need to do is damage 3 separate targets to get a 35% damage buff for 10 seconds. Auto Loading Holster is the most powerful perk on the list in general as this can be used willy nilly and doesn't need to take away too much from the build. Like mentioned, grenade launchers don't need damage perks so much so if you get a version with spike grenades and ambitious assassin then keep it as that's a role you want. We also have the Pergolus perk to the list which is extremely new for the season and the weapon as well. Considering the perk gives you melee energy back on weapon kills, I would rank this highly up if you ever intend to do a melee build based around it. And since it's on the grenade launcher which can one shot players or combatants, I can see this being useful when combined with the warlock lightning surge aspect for more toxic pvp behaviour. Also, as it's now considered new for this season, it also gets the origin trait of Stunning Recovery or Vanguard Vindication. Both perks, great depending on what you prefer is useful to you. So if we look at the perks, it has a very small pool which is great for getting easier combos you desire and the perks offered are streamlined and simple to use. Out of all these, I can see the weapon being popular if Bungie decides to bring out a mod that focuses on just grenade launchers and makes them popular. Now the age old question. What god roll or just roll in general should you be going for? For me, I would have gone with hard launch, blinding grenades, ambitious assassin and auto loading holster with a velocity or reload masterwork. This roll is suitable for both PvE and PvP and will allow you to keep single to large group stuns for a few seconds. Blinding grenades, although they require some learning to use, are great for stopping aggressive players in PvP or can cause panic towards them which you can use to mop up after. Combine that with Ambitious Assassin and Auto Loading on hand and you could pretty much stun players back to back easily and swap back to your primary to clean up. In fact, this setup using blinding grenades are very popular in 6v6 and if you ever see some of it in 3v3 then be prepared to fight for your life. At the same time, I can also see Lead from Gold is also good for endgame runs as you'll be more often than not 
using your heavy on ultra the bosses. I know many people will say Pile Nod Dust is better to have since that grenade launcher can get Ambitious Assassin, Autoloading Holster, Demolitionist, and Vorpal. And I will admit that Paul is better than what militias offer. But I will say this will ultimately be down to you to decide, as both weapons are great overall and both offer some usability and content. If you want an adapt grenade launcher on hand for the future, and want to make full use of what an adapt frame weapon can get, then I would recommend you nab a militias, as it's all around great to use. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and also if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, a share, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content and banter. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.